Hello, welcome back. This is part two of our discussion on the origins and the Vedas, which is the oldest of the sacred text within the Hindu tradition. And so in the first lecture, we discussed the origins and the very kind of naming, the very term Hindu and Hinduism itself and connected it to the Hindu river. We talked about the Harappa civilization and how it, how we see a continuity between that ancient civilization and that which came after it, the Hindu culture, the Hindu religion. Um, and today we're going to transition and begin talking about the Vedas. So we'll talk about the sacred text of Vedas today. Let me um, share my screen here um, with you and get started. All right. So the Holy Vedas um, the Holy Vedas um, are the oldest sacred text within the Hindu tradition. Vedas, um, the term itself comes, um, it means wisdom. And there's four parts to the Vedas. So there's four sections. There's the Rig Veda. I apologize. There's a Rig Veda, um, which has songs about truth, um, reality, and cosmos. And so the, the practice of singing, the hymns, um, um, is an important practice within lots of religious traditions. Um, and it's certainly an important practice in the um, Hindu tradition. Indeed, um, the um, Brahmin, that is the priestly Varna, that is those who are by birth um, are um, qualified to uh, be priests within the Hindu tradition. Um, part of their training in becoming a priest is learning how to hymn or sing um, the Vedas, especially these Rig Vedas, um, as perfectly as possible. And so there's really um, a strong emphasis placed on the practice of song and singing. So the Rig Veda, which is one of the four books, right, um, parts of the, the Vedas um, are hymns. Uh, the second part is the Yajur Veda. And the Yajur Veda contains like, rituals and the sacrificial rites, which were more important within the earliest part, um, earliest um, kind of centuries or generations of the Hindu tradition, and which would fade over time. But um, this section, the Yajur Veda, contains these ancient rituals um, and the sacrificial rites, which are going to pass over time. The third part is the Sama Veda. The Sama Veda um, has songs, again, the importance of singing, which we've been talking about. Um, it has songs dedicated to praising gods. And then the fourth part, um, which comprises the Vedas, is the Atharva Veda. And the Atharva Veda contains all kinds of interesting curses and charms. So, for example, there's a gambler's prayer, which is one of the um, charms within the Atharva Veda. So you have four parts to the Veda. The word itself, again, means wisdom. And this is the oldest collection of sacred texts within the Hindu tradition. Um, so the Vedas, um, in terms of how they were revealed, they were revealed to visionaries by both sight and sound. So sacred words or shruti um, denotes that which was heard. So one could hear um, the Veda and it could be revealed to them. Or a rishi um, could see the mantra and after seeing it could transmit it to the disciples in an oral tradition. So there's two ways the Vedas were revealed. Um, again, through hearing the revelation, actually seeing it physically, right, and then transmitting it orally. The Vedas were composed um, from 1500 BC Common Era to around 600 before the Common Era. And each collection of Vedas, there's four parts that we already talked about, four types of Vedas. And within each Veda, it consists of four main sections, hymns, directions for rituals, a composition or story, and a philosophical aspect as well. All right, so four parts to them all. Here's an example of a, a um, hymn. Um, coming out of the Vedas, and this is the creation hymn. Um, let, let me um, read it to you, give you a sense of, right, the, the type of literature which is embedded within the Vedas. 
So this is the creation hymn coming out of the Rig Veda. There is neither non-existence nor existence then. There is neither the realm of space nor the sky which is beyond. What steered? Where? In whose protection? Was there water? Bottomously deep? Was there below? Was there above? There were seed placers. There were powers. There was impulse beneath. There was giving forth above. Who really knows? This is the hymn, that same hymn, the creation hymn continued, right? So I'm kind of walking into this mystery um, of creation. We kind of we kind of been being invited into the mystery of creation in this hymn within the Vedas. It continues. Who really knows? Who will hear proclaim it? Whence was it produced? Whence is this creation? The gods came afterwards with the creation of the universe. Who then knows when it has arisen? Whence this creation has arisen? Perhaps it formed itself, or perhaps it did not. The one who looks down on it in the highest heaven. That one in the highest heaven in the Hindu tradition, the Brahma, we'll talk about later when we talk about the deities with the Hindu tradition. But the one who looks down on it from the highest heaven, heaven, only he knows, or perhaps he does not know. And so you have that moment of just like that hymn invites you into the mystery of creation. It ends by suggesting maybe the highest of God knows, or perhaps not, right? And so it's a hymn that kind of invites one to ponder the mystery of creation, which is one of many um, these, of hymns within the Rig Veda. And here's another important hymn. This hymn here, just to go over one more with you in this lecture um, on the Vedas, this is the hymn of the Supreme Person. This is an important hymn within the Hindu tradition because this hymn is foundational um, hymn for um for warranting, for substantiating um, what is called like the Varna system, a system of kind of social hierarchy within the Hindu tradition. Um, this hymn is used to substantiate that um, tradition, which we'll talk about later as we progress. And so this hymn is known as the hymn of, Sup of the Supreme Person. It's the hymn about the Supreme Person, the original person being divided up into different parts. And the different parts, as they're divided up, are assigned to different people within this social system known as the Varna system. All right. And so the hymn, the hymn, the hymn goes as follows. The cosmic person has, has a thousand heads, a thousand eyes and feet. It covers the earth on all sides and extends 10 finger lengths beyond. The cosmic person is everything, all that has been and able and, and will be. And so you have this cosmic person, but he'll talk about more as we progress in the Hindu tradition. But you have this first person, this cosmic person, and then it goes on in verse 12. From his mouth came the priestly class, from his arms the rulers, the producers came from his legs, and from his feet came the servant class. From his mind came the moon from his eye, the sun, Indra, and Agni. These are ancient gods in Hindu tradition. His mouth, the wind, came from um, his breath. From his navel came space from his head, the sky from his heat, earth from his ears, um, the four directions. And so that, that's another hymn. That's an important hymn in the Hindu tradition because it's connected to the Varna system, which we'll talk about later. Um, we mentioned the fourth type of um, um, Veda is the Arthur, Atharva Veda. Here you have the gambler's prayer. Um, this is an example of a... Um, a um, curse or a blessing, an incantation, um, that's a part as one example of a, um, within the Arth Artherva Vedas. Um, just to read it quickly, it, it asserts, um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. And there's different, um, you know, um, 
prayers within our Thermometers, prayers for those who um, want someone to fall in love with them, for example, right? Um, here is just an example of a gambler's prayer, which runs as follows. As evermore the lightning flash strikes, irresistible the tree, so irresistible may I conquer the gamblers with the dice. I pray to Agni, again, this ancient god in the Hindu tradition, um, which, um, him who guards his treasure here, won by homage, may he pile our, winning, our winnings. As twere with racing cars, I bring my presence, duly with reverence, let me laud the Maroons. My hand holds my winnings fast, and in my left is victory. I would I would that I were a winner of cattle and horses, wealth and gold. Dice, give me play that bring a fruit, as twere a cow with flowing milk. And as the bolstering binds, the bow unite me with a stream of gains. So this is the type, right? This is a prayer that a gambler would give, which is located within this section of the ancient, the most ancient sacred text, the Vedas, in the Hindu tradition. This is the gambler's prayer. So next class, um, we'll focus on um, one of the two major Hindu, Hindu epics, the Bhagavad Gita, and then the class thereafter, we'll focus on the other, which is the Ramayana. Both of these are central texts in the Hindu tradition alongside the Vedas, which we covered today. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.